CWMD. I love you, CPAC. I'm going to give you personal ASMR attention now. Do you have the tingles? What the hell am I doing, Tom Heinemann? What is that? Yeah. So I read an article in Vulture. <laughs> Welcome, ZPAC, to the show. I read an article. It's live, and we talk about stuff and things. Uh, I read an article in Vulture about ASMR, Autonomous Meridian Sensory Response. Fancy way of saying someone does some trigger to you auditorily or visually or tactily and you get the tingles. Mm -hmm. And it can be an almost ecstatic state and a relaxation state. And the reason it made the news is that there was a Super Bowl ad for Michelob Ultra, your favorite beer. Love it. Because it's low carb. It's low cal. Low cal, low, low, cal, carb. low carb, low flavor, low low flavor. That's true. <laughs> it's basically water. So the, yeah, so they had somebody Kravitz. I don't know if it's Lenny Kravitz's daughter. Forget her name. Doing ASMR with a bottle of beer, and it's like you hear the beer pouring, and she's like, "The beer is so delicious." And and what happened is middle aged men around the country started getting the tingles, and so they wrote an article about how it's now being used in advertising. But then I went down a rabbit hole while I was traveling to New Orleans for the American Card College of Cardiology conference that I did, where I got a standing ovation. Why? Because I'm telling them what they already know, which is shit's fucked up and we need to fix it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I started going down the ASMR rabbit hole because there are celebrities on YouTube with millions of subscribers, way more successful than we will ever be, and this is what they do. Hi, I'm ASMR darling. Today I'm gonna rub your face with makeup brushes. <laughs> and people get the tingles. And I watched probably 30 of these videos. <laughs> You know why? Because I'm actually a hyper responder. Like when they do it, and you have to wear earphones because it's recorded binaurally, so it's yeah. the way the ear hears. So you, it feels like they're blowing in your ear and telling you you're special. And honestly, I was like, hold me. I'm falling. <laughs> <laughs> See, I watched a few of these with you before the show, and I don't I don't think I'm a responder because I was just sitting there chewing gum. I'm like, I don't know. What's the deal with this? I'm going to tell you, Tom Heinberg, you haven't given it enough of a chance. As they say, you need to put headphones on, stop chewing gum, and open your mind, Tom, to the ASMR response. All right? Okay, I will. Okay, let's see if anyone else has, ha has had this. Don't ma get me started on this. Actually, I'm so excited to watch this. My kids are obsessed with these weird videos of people making millions of dollars when it's stuff I do every day and they hate me. <laughs> LOL, <laughs> Jamie Trey. It's true. So every day you're telling your kids, get the fuck into the car. <laughs> it's time to go to school. <laughs> Rachel Sigler says tingly. So Rachel, we are going to do a parody ASMR video, but I'm going to try to give people the tingles and it's going to work on my middle-aged female audience. I'm guaranteeing it's it. It's going to be like, hey, Dr. Ross is a shill ass bitch. <laughs> Fuck him. He should have his medical license stripped. <laughs> we should use it for good. Be like, hey, time to vaccinate. You can stay alive and keep your kid from becoming autistic. Is anyone getting the tingles right now? I have the tingles, <laughs> but it's in the wrong organ. Uh, all right. Brandon, By the way, have you ever heard people call Goosebumps chicken skin? Uh, yes. I hate those people. It's a Hawaiian thing. If you're so. one of those people, I dislike you Hey, bro, brother, did, I, I took a ride out to Haleakala at night. I got chicken skin for days. <laughs> Brian um, or Brandon Houlihan says, love the damn soap cutting videos. Okay, so this is an ASMR thing. They'll take a piece of soap and they'll slice, they'll score it and then they'll slice it and it goes, cut, 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 cut. and people go, ah, it's fucking weird. All right, this is strange. I don't think I have this. Yeah, well, we're going to find the out the tonight because you and I are going to, we're going to spoon. <laughs> and you're gonna whisper I'm going to whisper in your ear. ear and we're going to see what happens. I'll hey, be like, so it's match day today. Okay. So match, you, you, maybe you should do an ASMR, ASMR match, match day. day video. Okay. For everyone who didn't match and had to go through the soap, you're okay. You're going to be fine. Everything's okay. Actually, some of the, <laughs> some of my favorite ASMR videos were the affirmation ones where like this, like 18 year old woman tells you you're good enough and you're smart enough and people like you. And I'm like, I know, I know it's true. I feel it. And you're like, thank you, random girl who goes to community <laughs> college. I needed this in my life. Now, speaking of community college, all right, so back to the match. The match, and this relates to the college admission scandal we're gonna talk about. So, oh yeah, I'm excited to talk about the college admission scandal. You know what, scandal. in fact, let's talk about the match after the college admission okay. scandal. All right, so, okay. the college admission scandal. For anybody who doesn't know, uh, Aunt Becky from Full House and a bunch of other rich motherfuckers were cheating to get their kids into college. So they were like um, proctor. You know, they'd, they'd have their 
their daughter take the SAT with a proctor. And then the proctor would just be like, eh, I'm going to add 500 points to this score. And then that's how they were getting these kids into elite institutions, you know, USC, et cetera. You know, one of the interesting things about this whole scandal, what did you think about it when you first heard about it? The first thing I thought is, of course, yeah, this is what I thought the rich same thing. people like, I was do. Like, this is how the system works. This is how it's always yeah. worked. And knowing how even nepotism and and uh, uh, the, the sort of stuff that happens at large elite at universities. Now, remember, I so I went to Berkeley. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't have that shit. I don't think because it's a public school. But then the Stanford's and the Harvard's and those kind of things is a very different thing, USC. Right. And here's the thing, it's all about show, right? Because these parents are, you know, like the one daughter, Laughlin's daughter, mm-hmm. you know, she's already famous. Yeah, she's a YouTube personality. Uh, right. I think she has more followers than we do. By a double. On, on YouTube and yeah. everything. She has Instagram followers, and basically she got all these followers just for being hot right. and being Lori Laughlin's daughter. Exactly. And then, you know, she, she I, apparently, like, Lori Laughlin um, wanted her to go to college, and she didn't even want to go. She yeah. was like, I'm, Mom, I'm YouTube famous. I don't need to go to college, yeah, okay? I would go to YouTube college. Right. Like so then creator when she, school. When she did start going to college, she started making it into, like, a brand. Yeah. She was like, here I am at USC, and this is, here's, you know. Here's how you get into college, and here's my <laughs> advice. First of all, be true to yourself. Right. Second of all, especially if yourself is a rich, hot, smoking chick who's yeah. using all of that to get what she wants was, in the world. It was pointed out that like, you know, they only they only had to go through these jump through these hoops because they were new money. If they had been old money, yeah, they already their kids been are in. just grandfathered in. Yeah. And it's like, hey, you just because your dude, your kids are Harvard legacies, are they not? They are. But not because you come from old money, but because your wife busted her ass. Correct. So they will get benefit from her busting her ass. If if I ever allowed them to go to an expensive school like yeah. Harvard, I'm so cheap. The Indian in me is like, why go there? This is what my dad <laughs> told me. Berkeley just as good, much cheaper. I'm like, well, the just as good is debatable. It depends on the mm-hmm. name because we all know. Now, I, I was okay, so here's the thing. I was talking to uh, one of the uh, big wigs at the American College of Cardiology. We went out to dinner. A really, really cool guy was my former attending. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we were talking about what this college scandal. And he's like, look, you and I both know that a couple of things about this. Number one, yes, the rich get richer. There's a Pareto distribution and wealth begets wealth for this reason, that you have these ins and these networking things. And yeah. there's cheating that goes on. But the main thing is you and I also both know that your education is what you put into it. And it doesn't really matter where you go. But you and I also both know that when you get into an elite university, it opens networking doors. Yes. That's really what it is. And you're surrounded by peers that are vastly different than say you would have at a community college. So now, so he was telling me like he went to school with Ray Kurzweil. They were like roommates. Mm-hmm. And you know, Ray, Ray Kurzweil is a famous you know, futurist. And he was saying the guy was off the curve yeah. in terms of genius. And they actually started a company together, did all this stuff. He said that never would have happened if he'd gone to, you know, uh, you know, some other university. It would have been something different. But the big CEOs in the country that are the most successful often haven't gone to Ivy League schools. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, again, in academics. And so it, it's very mixed. I always think about Steve Ballmer when I think about this because Steve Ballmer was employee number uh, three at Microsoft and he was uh, he lived down the hall at Harvard from Bill Gates and Paul Allen. And uh, Steve Ballmer, if you've ever heard him talk, Listen, he got himself into Harvard, but he doesn't seem like he's on the same level as Gates and Allen. So he would go down the hall and be like, hey, what's up, Gates? What are you doing? You guys want to come to a kegger? And then all of a sudden it was like, hey, I'm employee number three at Microsoft. Turns out I'm a billionaire. I'm going to buy the Clippers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it, it said momentum. Yeah. Honestly, look, 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 look. That that said though, that said though, mm. most CEOs in America are from state schools. That's right. Most. That's right. The vast Be- majority. That's right. Because and they're a little more risk taking. They're a little more entrepreneurial. Mm-hmm. There's something different. Yeah, because you got to make something of yourself when you go to a state right. school. You can't just like rely on network connections or whatever. It's like the people we were talking about. The people who wear the Harvard sweatshirt. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's how you know they're a loser who yeah. underperform their classmates because it's like. The real people that went to Harvard, they'll just don't talk about this. I'm from Boston. You know what they say? Yeah, Yeah, they say, I went to school in Boston. Right. Right. And that, when you hear somebody say the phrase, I went to school in Boston, that means they went to MIT or they went to Harvard. Right. Right. Nine times out of 10. Right. 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 They're not talking about Boston University. Then there are those losers who went to Tufts. (laughs) That's right. I mean, they don't count at all. (laughs) They just say, I went to Tufts and I'm a loser. Uh, Oh, look, they're actually, they decided to call us during our show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's how it goes. Yeah. Um, what was it? <laughs> no, we were talking about uh, Pareto distributions, meritocracy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, most. I mean, 
most who go to you went to an Ivy League institution. You went to Stanford Med. No, I didn't. Right? What? No. no, you did residency. At yeah. So I went to two non Ivy League institutions yeah. and did my residency. So I went to uh, UC Berkeley. Yeah, you were in the hospital the whole time. At that's Stanford. right. So you that's never right. really were part of the Ivy. No, I never went to the university and. Yeah. UCSF was, you know, at that time, like the fourth ranked medical school in the country, mm -hmm. but it's, it didn't have, it still didn't have that Ivy League ring that a Stanford would have, even though Stanford was like number 11 at the time. Yeah. And, uh, and so it's interesting because there's more in the name than anything else, but I think most of it is your colleagues. So my colleagues at UCSF were some of the smartest, scariest, most disturbing human beings I've ever had the privilege to be around. I still hate most of them because they were so off the normal bell curve of humans that I couldn't relate to them, but I love them deeply because right. they taught me a lot about how to be a good doctor. You know, my father would always tell me about these uh, college admission things. Uh, you know, he would just basically, cause I didn't have, you know, I didn't have great grades in high school cause I was doing a lot of weed <laughs> and uh, you know, partying a lot and cutting a lot of class. So just, uh, Cause so I was, jealous. I was like Lori Laughlin's daughter. I was like, I want to go to college. This is Lame. Dumb. I'm, I'm an not, influencer, yeah, exactly. bitch. I'm an yeah. influencer on MySpace. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, my father was basically like, listen, you need to put in a bare standard minimum for your grades, okay? Just, you need to pass, mm. and then colleges, you're going to be a cash customer, colleges will take you. Yeah. Because you're going to pay 100% cash, you don't have financial aid, you don't, you don't qualify for it, I'm going to pay the bill, I'm going to foot the bill in cash. Just get your shit to a minimum standard. I was like, okay, below minimum, you said? <laughs> I'll do just You're below just minimum. however you like. That's right. Dad, you know what? It would work a lot better if you told me, get your damn degree. So I still went, I still went below Tom minimum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I had to go to community college for a year. And then? To get my shit up. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. I went to community college. I got straight A's and then I got in. You know, See, my, my, my take on this is that, again, it, it, it is what you make of it. Mm -hmm. And here's the best part. So my kid's school here in Vegas graduated uh, or uh, hosted uh, uh, one of the parents who was involved in the scandal, yeah. but they left before uh, the college admissions process. Mm -hmm. and, our, and the principal had to send out an email to all the parents going, listen, calm down. You know, they weren't here when this happened. Right. We're dedicated to fairness and this and that. And none of our counselors were involved. And it's what's interesting is like these coaches and counselors that are all yeah. bought off. It's interesting because um, because Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman and William H Macy are wrapped up in the scandal. They're taking all of the heat from the press, but right. you know there are a lot a of just lot. regular rich people who are partners in law firms. Yep. Or Garden Variety, Hillsborough, yeah, yeah, top mm -hmm. top investors or medical doctors, whatever it is. So fun watching looking at that list. Uh -huh. So did you get a weird voyeuristic? Uh, oh yeah, 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 of course. Me and my wife. And I was like, oh snap, they, they're raiding Aunt Becky, dude, from Full House. It, yeah, <laughs> it's rare that my my wife will text me articles, but yeah. she texted me this and she's like, check out the list of names. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ooh, yeah. immediately read through. I'm like, oh, that's a dentist right there. Persian dentist. Well, of course he's a criminal. This hits a lot of levels, right? Because yeah. this is not just a rich people thing. Not all rich people do this for their children. And, you know, Z runs in hoity-toity circles, so he knows a bunch of people. So the reason you get schadenfreude from it is you look at it and you go, oh, this one's got a stupid kid. Look, they had yeah. to lie for him. Yep. Right? Like, you know, and then, and then there's part of me who actually felt really bad for some of the kids because they were in the dark about it yeah and in fact so bad. some of the kids didn't know that this was going on so they were like oh my god i got in on my merits yeah yeah exactly and then you find out no you're a worthless piece of shit who's <laughs> yeah. just a rich scion of a, parents had another to pay piece of unethical shit. grand for you right to, how you does know. that feel you need someone in asmr going you're okay i'm gonna pluck away the badness but you know it, it's interesting because that, that that gets to the point one of them was like took the sat yeah ended up getting cheated on like the guy basically changed the answers he was paid off the proctor for the test right gets a great score and had taken it before, got a shitty score. And the way they calibrated it was the test takers like, okay, it's gotta be about 30% better, otherwise it's gonna draw eyes, we gotta do this, gotta make mistakes in some of the same places, gotta do that. The guy gets the score back, the kid, and goes, oh shit, I crushed it, bro. I wanna take it one more time. I bet I could do even better. <laughs> and the parents are like, no, 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 no. Everything's cool, bro. We don't wanna spend another $15,000 to buy off the test taker. I mean, it was hilarious and yet devastating at the same time. I, I understand why people are upset about it because, you know, they're taking a spot away from somebody who earned it, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that doesn't feel good in a meritocratic society, which we don't have, but we would like we to We would have. like to have, yeah. Um, but, you know, really where you should be upset is from birth. Like, yeah. have, most kids in this country have shitty education from, you know, K through 12. Right. And uh, just right at the very end, you're going to get upset because some rich people paid off 
the college admissions, uh, yeah. you know, system. Yeah. The industrial complex around that. And you wonder too about the ethics of what they're doing. So they're doing what they think is in the best interest of their child and taking whatever means they're that are at their disposal. Yeah. It's completely unethical. But is it? You know, can you totally disunderstand what they're doing? I have a hope that this may be the. Uh, this may be the straw that breaks the camel's back on the tuition bubble. Yeah. Because what's the value for the vast majority of Americans um, going to college? Most most Americans, or let's say not all Americans, need to be going to college. I agree with that. Right? This like liberal dream of like, you know, the Bernie Sanders thing where it's like, we're going to free college for all. Why? Yeah. Why? How about we have free trade school for right. most? Right. You know? I think vocational schools are good for a lot of people. I think state schools are really good fit for a lot of people who want flexibility and are going to become CEOs, right? Yeah. I, re- I re- recently reread that book, The Millionaire Next Door. And yeah. a lot of what it's talking about in that book is that the people who you know end up being uh, multimillionaires right. oftentimes are working class people who have working class jobs who end up owning their own company, like right. plumber, welder, you know, whatever, yeah. uh, HVAC. And- because you don't have to pretend to be something you're not, so you don't have to like you know lease a BMW and buy a bunch of fancy suits from Brooks Brothers. You just you know hang around normal people your whole life, save your money, and then you end up being super rich. Yeah, right. So it's it's not like going to college is the path to success for everybody. No, now and I'll say this: going to college is a perfect fit for people who are intellectuals who do want to be part of this sort of academic elite and want to advance knowledge and research. That's great. Mm-hmm. You can do that, and then a big name school helps you through the connections and the peers and the access to world-class researchers. So yeah. for me, like being at Berkeley, being able to work with this great geneticist, being able to go to UCSF with all these great researchers, that was fantastic, and it gave me an ac- – you know, so when I did I did my talk at uh, ACC, the feedback I got from the leadership afterwards we had lunch was, you know, what's interesting is you're able to speak academically about a problem and at the same time insert humor and passion and the performance of it. And I said, well, I never would have had the academic part if I hadn't gone to those institutions. So it just depends on what you're trying to do in the world. Yeah. And that gets me to the match. The match. The match. So we supporters got to see uh, a piece we made last year where we dubbed over the Hunger Games and called it the Hunger Match. And it was basically making fun of the fact that if you don't, like the match is an insane, archaic sort of thing where it's like, you know, computer matches all the medical students who are applying for residencies with residencies. So it's like a great dating game. And if the computer makes a match then and and you make a match, then that's where you go. So if your first if your first ranked choice agrees with you, you'll match with them. If not, you might go down to your fifth choice. And if none of them match, then you go into what used to be called the scramble, but now it's called the soap. The soap, yeah. And where it's a secondary match where the programs that got jilted match with the students who got jilted. And it's very stressful and very demoralizing. And this year, it got even more so because ERAS, the Electronic Residency Application System, that is the matrix that you go through, done fucked up. Mm -hmm. They had a big glitch. The soap couldn't happen. People were like, what? And it was a disaster to the point where it became a thing on Twitter where people were like, oh my, there was a parody Eris account that, <laughs> that got built and it, it creates so much stress. Now, last year we did that video about what I was still calling the scramble right. and it was mean. It was like, well, what do we call the last person in the class of Caribbean medical students, everyone? Doctor, and here's your colleague, Dr. Peter. And he's like, duh. And I mean, it was just, I thought it was brilliant. Listen, I still think it's brilliant. I don't want to be mean, but one of the dumbest kids I used to party with back in high school is a doctor who went to the Caribbean. So I would never go see his ass. His name's Jared. He dumb. Don't go see him. He's in Arizona. You meet any doctor under 35 in Arizona named Jared, be suspect. Because that fool is dumb as a box of rocks. I'm going to I'm gonna say something now. So, so And I'm going to couch this very carefully because I will be accused of being elite. I Some of the smartest, most competent doctors I've met have trained at what you would call third and fourth tier schools. Mm. Some of the dumbest doctors I've met that are dangerous have trained at elite universities, but on average, yeah. the worst doctors that I've worked with trained in really poor circumstances. Yeah. And the reason is 
it's your peers, mm -hmm. it's your mentors, it's the environment. If the environment is like, we're just gonna take the lowest common denominator in the community and have them teach you how to be a doctor, yeah. well, fuck, you're gonna get that education. I actually think the best doctors uh, come out come out, come out of probably the second tier. That's probably, you know, because like they have to place, work. Places and, like Ohio State or Florida or something be, like could that. Could be true. Yeah. I, and again, I you know. Because you gotta bust your ass, you gotta prove it, you know. You know, and a lot of people go into academics from higher tier stools and schools and they're doing a different kind of game, right? They're yeah. doing research. They're, bench science or yeah, yeah a mixed mixed clinical bench and and that's great and but 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 again so where you where you go matters but who you are matters more this is another thing let's let's just broaden the conversation about education what do you think about trump's uh proposed bill that you know colleges basically have to allow free speech if they're going to take public money so it's interesting if they're going to take public money then sure because he right. can he can put whatever contingencies he wants on free speech. Private universities can do whatever they want. Right. Yeah. So and again, the free speech thing is more like you know what you see. It's inter it's interesting. Okay. So the right really loves to highlight when like someone at Berkeley punches a Republican in the face, mm -hmm. and it, it generates outrage on the right. And the left likes to highlight you know how racist and and you know Pareto distribution the right is. So. I think it all plays into whichever extreme you're talking about. The, the The truth is, we should have free speech on campuses because that's how you learn. If you, you're not exposed to outrageous ideas, how but, are you going to? But Z, but Z, but hate speech is part of free speech. Yes, we can't have hate speech. We on can't. Campus. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that but that's that's exactly the point. Yes, you can have hate speech on campus. Yeah, as long as it's not inciting people to violence, because that's against the law. Right. That's a non protected speech. Right. Uh, but. Look, if you go there and you're like, look, I don't like um, Samoans because Samoans are, you know, big, mm -hmm. you know, and tall and they frighten me. And yeah. so we should discriminate against Samoans. You I can always, say that. I always liked uh, tagalongs. Um, Girl Scout cookies? Are we talking about Girl Scout cookies? Samoas? <laughs> <laughs> I like the mint ones. What are those? <laughs> Thin mints. Thin mints. Everybody likes thin mints. You got to put them in the freezer. Oh, that's one of the best. I did not that's know this. Now you're not doing keto anymore, right? You're doing OMAD. I'm one doing meal a day. one meal a day. Yeah, mm -hmm. which that's meant what I, I went to In and Out yesterday, and I went sick. Tell me about this Neapolitan wait, wait, no, milkshake. No, no, no. For, forget about all that. Well, are you going to send your daughters to college? Well, I'm not going to send them anywhere. I'm going to hope they would want to go to college. You're going to force them into college. Well, yes, yeah, of course, right? Of course, yeah, right. Now, are you going to be mildly despondent if they choose to go to something you view as third rate? Okay, so here's the thing. Personally, yeah, no. No, because I know my I know my oldest but, daughter. Yeah, socio culture socio culturally, my wife will be livid. Mm. Yeah, because uh, they're expected to perform. Yeah, you should see these kids. They're like a million times uh, smarter than I am. Because you know, <laughs> they're not. They're no, just more yeah, diligent. No, they're being well. They're being raised by you know a, two very smart doctors, and you guys are on top of them all the time. And like they're playing the violin and like doing advanced quadratic equations i'm assuming i don't know you know i don't know z and now they're going to go to public school where uh, we already looked at the classes they've already done every class that's available in middle school it's well that's like, interesting well, yeah because you're moving back to the bay so like in the yeah. bay it's a pressure cooker where all the kids are expected to go to stanford or harvard yeah. or you know yale or columbia whatever yeah so do you worry about that yeah we worried a lot about yeah. it and, and i think uh, do you think their life is going to be better if they go through that pressure cooker, they get out the other end, they go to a Harvard or Yale or Columbia, and then they're 24 and they're done, or maybe they go into an advanced degree and they're 27 and they're done or something like that. Do you think their life is going to be better only, for having done that? Only if they have the personality aptitude that they are intellectually inclined and they like that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so I, I know my youngest probably has that. I'm not sure about my oldest. I think my oldest is a creative. Yeah. And so the debate is, you know, she could go to an art school and probably thrive. Whereas you put her in like some hard science or something, she's going to be miserable. The, the point I'm getting to though is for a lot of parents, like if they got into a state school instead of a Harvard or a Yale or whatever, this is like the end of the world. Oh, it's the end of the world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Honestly, and so that's why they're willing to take these drastic actions to cheat in, yeah. in order to get them where I, they need to go. I, I agree with you. I would have felt that way. 10 years ago before I started ZDog MD. And now I'm like, I, my mind is much more open to the idea that you have to live your freaking path. Your if, truth, your, your truth, truth bro. Live up to your dream, man. Listen to your heart. <laughs> but also listen to your mind, which is telling you, you also got to get paid. Yeah. Look, look at my path, dude. Like I busted my ass. I killed a homeless man, hid the body, got into medical school for doing that. 
go to UCSF, bust my ass, go to Stanford, bust my ass, work for 10 years, bust my ass, all so that I could tell people, listen, the whole thing is a fucking lie. Yeah. Uh, but it, I have to do that in order to, 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 now I'm hoping my kids don't have to go through the same process before they find their path. Are you always um, somewhat trepidatious about telling people to not go to college? Because, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I am too, because you know, like it's like, okay, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and all these guys, they all dropped out of college. They all dropped out of really good college. Really good, they got and they all, good And they all went, yep. you know, and they just deferred until their companies were successful. It, you know, people. I think people take those anecdotes and they're like, well, I'm just going to drop out of junior year of high school. Look at, look like, at, no, uh, no, 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 dude, your life is going to be shit if you drop out of junior year of high school. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Look at Princess Theranos. Yeah. She drops Liz out of Holmes, Stanford right. just to copy, you know, Bill Gates or whatever. Exactly. And, and th- th- this is the thing. These people have other advantages. Malcolm Gladwell said these are outliers for a reason. They were yeah. born born at the right time. They were exposed to the right sets of computers. They had parents who allowed these particular experiences to occur. Now, how do you game that as a parent? Well, you do what you can to allow your kid to flourish, but you also may encourage them to actually put their get their shit together so that yeah. those experiences are allowed. Well, and also, you know, children that all the billionaires come from the upper middle class. They come from professional um, people most of the time. Like you got an Oprah here and there. Yeah. But the vast majority of the billionaire class, the people that are very successful, they come from the upper middle class. Yeah. So they were already successful. So they already had a safety net. So yeah, yeah we all uh, applaud them for walking the tightrope, right? But they have a net underneath them. Whereas yeah. people who come from a disadvantaged background have to walk that rope with no net. That's right. And you don't get as many chances walking the rope when you're walking it with no net. You that, know? That's true. And, and the question is, would they take more risk or less risk in that situation? Because they have nothing to fall back on, but they also have less to lose. Mm. So See, when you have, yeah, when you're in that, when you're from an impoverished background, though, and you and you feel like you have that nothing to lose mentality, that usually becomes I'm going to be a drug dealer and have a shootout <laughs> with the law, right? Whereas if you're Mark Zuckerberg and you have a nothing to lose mentality, that's like I'm going to take some liberties with Harvard's code base. Right. It's a very different right, sort of right, 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 right. Yeah, different part of the distribution. Yeah. Yeah, and. and uh, It'd be great if we had a real egalitarian society where everyone was based on meritocracy. It's going to take generations to get there. Yeah. We, have to, we have to call it out when it's not happening, but at the same time recognize that it is happening and then recognize that everybody is the result of some degree of do, luck. Do you think we have any meritocracy in our society? I at, think there's some. At I, large. Where, where is an area where you see meritocracy uh, functioning at a high level? At a high level. Meaning it's like you're close to above 90%. Uh, it's funny, I have to struggle with that because in medicine, it's not entirely a meritocracy. No, it's not. The doctors with the best marketing, you know, the most procedures, they, 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 it, it begets more. If they have a good degree, they tend to, but you know, it's interesting because the people making the most money in healthcare are not the Harvard trained elite. Right. They are the people who went to the lower tier schools who just churn volume. I think the, one of the only areas that I can ever, ever think of it is uh, sports. And sports are a, almost pure 100% meritocracy, especially in the big sports like the NFL, the NBA, the MLB. You don't get on the field unless you're one of the best. Ah, but how did you get to be the best? So you were nurtured, you were cultured, you were recognized early, you were given opportunities, you were born at the right time of the year. Um, So there's a lot of stuff, yeah. Yeah, well, but a lot of those things are outside. They're outside of your control, right? Like, it's the same thing as being born rich. I get what you're saying, but at least it doesn't have um, racial and and class distinctions that, that attached may, to it. That may be true, although you know you could argue like yeah, LeBron James is a genetic super freak. Right. I wasn't born with LeBron James genetics. Right. You know, so I'll never be able to do what LeBron James can right. do. That said, like it was all his effort and work and that got him where he was, and he was born in nowhere, Akron. You know, right to to into poverty, and he was able to transcend that because of how meritocratic sports well, are. So I, I would say that I would say I would say sports is more on the on the spectrum towards meritocracy, but still not pure. Yeah, because uh, everything's a little gray. Well, the, that's true. Yeah, that's whereas true. business actually can often be more towards, especially high end business where you want to be in a in a high end corporation doing something, especially in a more uh, hierarchical. It, it, there's a lot of like connections yeah. and and momentum from the past. We talked about karma. On another show, right? Karma is that groove that happens from causes and conditions set up out of your control. Yeah, that's really what this is. Now, imagine you're a kid of like Laughlin, or let's let's use the other chick, um, the full not the full. Who was the one from from uh, Felicity uh, Huffman's Felicity Huffman? Kid? Yeah. So Huffman's kid's not like some Instagram star or anything. No, 
Was that the one where they cut her face off and put it on an athlete's body? And uh, I don't know that that was explicitly attributed to her, but that was one of the things that was going on in the report, yeah. that they were uh, taking photos off Google and then Photoshopping um, the heads of these children onto athletes yeah. uh, from other backgrounds to make them look like they had... It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, well, so, okay. So, or they, you know, just go out and full on hire a photographer and be like, you know, dress up like you're a tennis player and take photos of them fake playing tennis basically yeah exa- exactly exactly yeah. what, what what were what was the question again now we were about talking about meritocracy had, meritocracy and but there was something relating to that that sports, made me ask about sports, sports and meritocracy. meritocracy i've completely forgotten what you we lost were it see but live, anyway live tv here's the thing uh sports are the most meritocratic part of our society and when you look at our society you can almost find no meritocracy anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of lip service to meritocracy but, in but Silicon it Valley, but it's not real. I remember the thread now. The thread, it's funny because it actually, me losing the thread is a result of the same thing I was talking about, which is causes and conditions setting up how things happen in the universe. Mm-hmm. So F- Felicity Huffman set up a series of causes and conditions by becoming famous, by generating revenue, by getting rich, having power, having influence, having connections. That child then is the beneficiary of causes and conditions out of their control. So in many ways that is out of their control. What is their control? What they choose to do yeah. with the causes and conditions that are given to them. So that's what's gonna be interesting is what happens to these children now? They're in school, what do they do with this? Some of them dropped out, I think I think Lori Laughlin's kids dropped yeah, out. Yeah, cause she's like, fuck it, I don't even need to she's be like, here. I'm an Instagram I was star. right, bitch, and at appar- least you a BMW bitch. Apparently she was on the, um, the yacht of one of the USC's board of <laughs> when she got you the know, news. trustees or whatever when she got the news. U- USC so, I mean, that's is an a whole place. different level. Yeah, that's a whole different. I mean, well, the whole USC med is, school dean thing they USC had. USC is one of those places you go to hang out with movie stars' kids. I right. mean, that's just how USC has always been. You yeah. know, I mean, I know some really good docs there, uh, but there was that case of their dean who was a fucking right. drug dealer and yeah. into prostitution. Uh-huh. And it's like, I mean, what medical school dean isn't? <laughs> but I mean, to get caught, that's just weak. Yeah, that is just weak. What else was on our list of talk about, Logan? Uh, more live stuff. <laughs> <laughs> more live. I think we did. I, oh, ASMR. So, guys, you need to go check out every ASMR video. And this is the other thing they do, Tom. They scratch. They scratch on on your ear. <laughs> It's really, they take a makeup. This brush. is already the ASMR thing is already creeping me out. It should. Rebecca says uh, playing sports is expensive and plenty of kids can't afford to get started. Yeah, so there you go. Interestingly, yeah. Why do you think soccer is the world's number one sport? It's fucking cheap. All you need is a ball. Yeah. One ball, and it doesn't even have to be a ball. You know it what? Could be I anything have, that's round. I have two and balls. You can kick. Yeah. And they're round, and you can kick them. <laughs> so maybe I should be right. It. Whereas American football, yeah, you need all the pads, all the stuff. Right. You need a yard markings. You know, it's good like, point. Yeah, that's that's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So I get. I guess internationally it's really a meritocracy uh a soccer uh, or i'm sorry football well you still have to be genetically gifted right 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 now here here's one of the things about uh we do have you know there are there are places in our society where you're looking for merit meritocratic uh elements right like when i and this is gonna sound racist to some people but when i uh you know see like a black pilot on the flight mm. in my mind i'm like oh this guy's got this because I'm thinking <laughs> he had to bust his ass. He had to bust his ass to become, overcome all kinds of bias. Same with a female pilot. I think the yeah, same thing. Yeah, that's true. Right? Actually, yeah, I, I, feel I this, think the same way about th- black doctors. I think the same way about female lawyers. I just that's how kind I feel. Of interesting. It's like a reverse bias because I feel the same way sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, man, you had to overcome. My dude, listen. Yeah, I'm, I'm dealing with a, a lawyer right now who's a guy. He's one of the dumbest motherfuckers I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> and then I'm dealing with a bunch of lawyers who are women, and everything gets done flawlessly. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm now I'm getting reverse biased. I'm like I'm not hiring any more lawyers that are dudes. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It's really funny, man. Uh, <laughs> it, it's true. That's a kind of yeah. You know, and again, that that's the same. It's, it's still bias. Uh, yes. But it's interesting because it's a it's a, I think it's a slightly more compassionate bias going. Oh, you we recognize the bias against uh, uh, someone with your background in that position and celebrate the fact that you were able to actually overcome it you know and, and this is the thing you know so people say well they were in affirmative action hire it's like that doesn't really exist anymore uh you know depends on what it is it depends it's on still what it totally is. exists like well, in fire departments uh police is that, departments is yeah. that right fire is a big one especially in uh, california is that true yeah it's 100 percent true so you, they just have diversity requirements well or? fireman was always kind of a job that was uh you know big brawny white dudes right. irish dudes right, who right. Were firemen right? right and then uh, you know because of affirmative action in california uh it became near near impossible for those guys to get 
those kind of jobs anymore. Yeah. Uh, so because you know you had to because listen, Z, if 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 it's me, I want a small Asian woman carrying See, I was me out say, of a fire. I was gonna say you know? if, if I don't get a thin <laughs> Indian guy with a wispy mustache getting my cat out of the tree, I don't understand. The whole the whole like we need uh, you know like ooh, there's 11 percent black people, so we need 11 percent black fireman is the stupidest thing i've ever heard of in my entire life like just because yeah. people look like you they're gonna yeah. they're gonna pull you out of a fire better well well what what the well, fuck man? again listen it's great to have a goal of diversity but the thing is if you're if you're why why what, should you have a goal of diversity the, just to break just to break the conditioning the groove i get it yeah. but that's just an outcome you can't mandate so an that, outcome you have to break it back at the right, start right so that's what i was saying yeah it's fine to have the goal of that but you cannot make that the process right you can't say we're we're going to mandate 11 percent african americans in fire departments to reflect population or this 20%. is what they do though that's this affirmative is, that's, action yeah and that's abject horseshit this what you what have to say to do at google you know right right like, right you're trying to, say, to get certain amount of females certain amount of you have you know, to everything. go back to the root break down the initial bias and open up equality of opportunity now i can understand the converse argument which is well that will never happen Happen because people are fucking dicks. Well, and there's this momentum and cause and condition that have already happened. But the truth is that should be our goal. It should not be the goal of like, well, we want to see 20%, you know, African Americans in medicine or whatever. It's like, well, that's lofty. But the way you do that is you break down the barriers, you improve education, you improve access and safety. Yeah, I don't care about this at all. Here's my thing. <laughs> I want no, no, no. I don't give a shit about anybody's skin color. And people say that this is now a privileged position that, mm -hmm. that because I can look past color, mm. that I'm in a place of privilege. Oh, yes. you, Tom, you, you born rich and white. I get it. I want to focus on capitalization, which is getting the smartest people from the most impoverished communities where they actually need to go. So like before you're going to be a black urban, you know, inner city teenager who gets gang affiliated at 13, I want to recognize that you're high IQ early on and lead you into Play being up. an engineer or yeah, a doctor yeah, or yeah, whatever, yeah, because yeah. society needs you because society is a weak link sport, right? Like the weakest links are the problem in society. What we've been in all these halls of power with all these people, you know, billionaires and whatever top healthcare executives. I've been around all these fuckers. Top docs. Yeah. And what, you know what they talk about? They spend all of their goddamn time talking about poor people and what to do with them. That's all anybody at the top wants to talk about because who's going to be the one person who can take your shit from you? The people at the bottom if they rise up. <laughs> so th <laughs> this is all anybody is working on, right? It's not like there's some secret evil cabal to keep everybody down. They actually want smart people to rise up. We yeah. actually want people at the bottom. I actually, I actually think you're right. I, th I think what it is is, look, and you can spin that in a positive way and say, it is better for society that the smartest and most talented people in any given field are allowed to rise. Yeah. If that's an African-American female coming out of Compton, fantastic if she is going to be an aerospace engineer yeah. because she has the gift, the talent, the drive, the motivation, the personality, but does not have the support, the resources, the safety, the parenting, whatever it is. Yeah. So how do we overcome that? I think that's better for everybody and, and rich people and poor people can agree that that's a, a goal. It's only the most delusional psychopaths, I think, who want to intentionally hold down classes of people based on skin color and and that sort of thing because of fear. Well, we just and, and it means they're they're right. not understanding. They just assume that it, because you're this race, you think this way, you are this way. Well, I think the people that think that way uh, don't even have the power to hold them down. I think I think those mm. are the people that are at the the same level, right? Who think that they should have special privileges just they're fighting over the same just because they're white, right, yeah. right, right, right. Because right. I'm not going to have a fear response uh, to you unless we're fighting over the same. Exact you know, per, per, you, the, the same perceived scarce resource, right? Right. Because like, right. I don't care. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. All right. So let me see. What else did we? Uh, <laughs> what else did we want to talk about? I want to make sure we. I think that's that's it. Should we take some comments? Um, why do we have to focus only on high IQ people? IQ is actually a pretty poor predictor, and honestly, I don't give a shit what your IQ is. You have something that could be harnessed to benefit society. A meritocracy should do that, Adeline T. I think what Tom is saying is IQ is one measure, like you'd be really good at solving particular uh, problems, so that's what you should go into, but there are other uh, aspects of intelligence beyond. Yeah. yeah. And I'm also, agree. you know, the reason I like to focus on getting people who are high IQ where they need to go is because I think that if you have people who are high IQ, high, conscien high conscientiousness, mm that um they will be able to design systems for for everybody else yeah you know they, yeah. they can they can have more of an effect now like when i go to the when i go to the grocery store and the kid with down syndrome is is bagging the bags and you know he like i have a really great interaction with him he provided a lot of value in my life that right. day right yeah. but i'm just one person and you know he probably sees 150 200 people that day but you know sometimes if you're working on these big systems and you can have effects on 
millions, billions of people. That's that's the thing, Tom, because you're very special <laughs> and you're very important. But you know, it's interesting. So Facebook being down the other day, right? And everybody was like, I got all these messages. I can't delete my comment that I left in an angry state, and I'm like, Son, I didn't do that. I, I, this is not me. You talk to Zuck. But it, it, it made me think, oh, interesting how we have really become dependent on this platform to even get our discourse out. So I realized mm. then that we need to diversify our bonds. It was kind of nice. I was like, yeah, thank God. Nice. There's no chatter. I was in New Orleans. I didn't have to check Facebook. I went on Twitter instead. <laughs> I started putting videos on there. Hey, everybody, I'm in New Orleans and I'm freaking out that there's no Facebook. Twitter was like, this is our moment, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then Jack uh, Dorsey freaking interviews an anti-vaxxer, Ben Greenfield. And I was like, what the fudge? At least he didn't talk about vaccines. That would have been the final fucking straw. So uh, if the match system is so antiquated, what's holding up changing it? Is that just the effect of the broken healthcare system? It, it's not as antiquated as all that. I think it can be better. But this idea of a computerized match, actually, it's it's hard to argue that it isn't... Um, it isn't a, a reasonable setup for most people. I think it's the people who fall through the cracks where it becomes a problem. Increasingly, I think the part of the problem is we don't have enough slots, and then it's it's this big fight. By the way, that reminds. Ooh, thank you for the video on moral injury. We forgot to talk about the video. That's on moral what we were going to talk about: moral yeah. injury, moral injury. So, so that, we did a video where Z ranted and raved about moral injury. Uh, and we also did a video right before it about one particular healthcare company, and that's only available to supporters. Because I told Z, I was like, "You need to get really angry right before we did this moral injury video, so you're going into it with the right, with the right verve and vigor." And uh, he was like, "Oh, I know just the fuckers to talk about." Oh my god! <laughs> you know, it's funny people that people. So since we put the moral injury piece out, it's got like seven seven odd million views already. Seven point five. Not that you're counting. Mm -hmm. And um, it, I've gotten more messages from old colleagues that I haven't talked to in decades who are like, dude, I saw your thing, haven't connected in years, wanted to tell you thank you for that. It hit a nerve, right? Now, people don't realize how we did that. And it's, it's, it's what you said. So Wendy Dean and Simon Talbot's article, I read that, and it, to me, it was saying what everybody already knew in a different way. It said, stop calling it burnout, call it moral injury, here's why. And I'm like, that's what it is. I called them, we had a talk. I said, I'm going to do what I can to promote this idea because it is correct and it will help us to reframe the conversation from an individual problem to a systems problem, which then if we focus on fixing the system, we then fix the individual problem. Mm -hmm. So resilience is, we were already pretty resilient. So Tom says, all right, we're shooting these videos because we have the camera for a while, this high-end camera. Let's, by the way, we're releasing a CME episode maybe later today, tomorrow on cannabis hyperemesis, we, which we shot with the same camera. So he says, okay, do a rant on this insurance company you hate because they f fucked with you while you were at Turntable Health and you've had to sit with their executives and they're horrible human beings mm -hmm. and they're not like some other insurance companies actually that I've worked with where you're actually thinking, oh, they're trying to do good in the universe. These people are trying to care only about their bottom line. They're a massive conglomerate of horrible, horrible corporate pieces of fucking shit. And he's like, just rant on that. And I'm like, oh, I got you, bro. So I did the rant. And then we put it out for supporters because I love my supporters because they're willing to put five bucks a month up to hear me rant and they give me good feedback. We put it out, but then right after I did the rant, Tom's like, okay, now do your moral injury piece. So I did six minutes off the top of my head on moral injury and it was infused with the same anger and cursiness as the United piece. People think, oh, we do 30 takes or we've written it out, not at all. Yeah, we never we never write any of these. They are all directly from Z's dome. Yeah, they're all from His my unconscious. Shiny, shiny dome. <laughs> they all come glowing out of this bald <laughs> head. And that one came out in that way because Tom set it up right. He set up the causes and conditions to get my unconscious primed to do it that way. And it happened to work. So that's how we work. And uh, that's why sometimes you'll see a piece where it doesn't hit. Right. You know, it's like, yeah. well, now he's just rambling about some bullshit. <laughs> and so it, it's hit or miss. And that I think that's the thing. If we only tried to release hits, we'd have to start writing things out. And honestly, that's not who I am. I'm never going to be who I am. And it's not what you guys really secretly want, I think, or need as a movement. 
It was dead on. I'm a medic and it was so accurate. I shared uh, and friends from other careers thought it applied to them as well, specifically teachers. Teachers, says. teachers have been overwhelming. I've been getting a lot of messages like, you made me cry with this. This is what it's like being a teacher. And with teachers, it feels terrible because here are, are folks that are not compensated for the pain. You could argue like paramedics, nurses are not compensated appropriately yeah. for what or, they do. I heard it from uh, police. Police, I heard it from fire. fire. Uh, um, imagine being a cop and like, you know, you're just trying to act actively do well in your community and yeah people, people think that people take a shit on you people think that you're there to beat and harass right. black people right and that's like a prevailing sentiment right you and know? you're like you're thinking in your mind you're like no that's just a cool side effect of what i get to do the real primary thing is <laughs> wow protecting white people <laughs> <laughs> wow z wow i'm joking wow. i think no i am joking so but this and law enforcement is a particular close to my heart because i've only it's interesting did i ever tell you the story about how you know, a lot of people have bad experiences with law enforcement. I have only had good experiences with law enforcement. Yeah. And it's not like I'm entirely white. But in San Francisco, I remember I got in a car accident. A guy ran a red light when I was in medical school, was high on cocaine, hit me going through the green light, killed two people. I had this PTSD that it took me a long time to get over. And it was a police officer, this Irish guy, uh, picked me up and drove me home. He didn't have to do that because I didn't have a car, and uh, was talking to me the whole time, and was just like, man, it's hard to go through that, and, you know, let me, let, and, he, and he said, let me tell you about my kid who has asthma, and who died uh, from asthma, because I told him I was a medical student, and he tells me the story, and I'm in the back of this car, like, getting emotional, and, and it was that, it's those little human touches where you go, I know why you're a law enforcement officer, mm -hmm. because you love human beings, yeah. and, uh, and so I, I always remember that, and so I, I'm still very pro-LEO. Every time I get in, uh, into it with uh, the police, I'm like, yeah, I was doing that thing you said I was doing, <laughs> but I'm not going to admit to it, because then you can use it against me in court. <laughs> and that's appropriate as well, <laughs> uh, Tom Heinever. But I don't actively fight it. I'm not like, hey, man, what the hell? What are you harassing me for? <laughs> I'm not like that. No, I'm like, yeah. I remember um, I got a reckless driving when I was uh, 20. Well done. Yeah, because I was drinking and driving. I know. I don't do, I don't do it anymore. I was 20. And uh, the cop pulled me over, and he was like, hey. I ran a red light right in front of him. He was like, hey, you been drinking? I was like, mm. yep. <laughs> oh <laughs> so I was, I was wow like, uh -huh. and then he was like okay get out of the car and i was like okay and that was you very, know what a very pleasant dui stop Z. yeah yeah it's really interesting to me because the old tom oh yeah that was pre-dmt he parties yeah he, the old tom party the old tom fucks <laughs> the new tom is this kind of woke introspective motherfucker with a kid who would never do that. And it's kind of interesting. So people who like judge people based on past actions, they can go fuck themselves. Well, you know, it's like, I always knew it was stupid, all the things I was doing back then. Right. But I was like, I can't help myself. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, you're under 25, your brain hasn't cooled. Yeah, yeah. And so you're just super impulsive, or at least I was. It's terrifying, actually. Yeah. yeah. I was too. I used to fly off the handle. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. just in a way that was so, I remember I almost got my ass kicked at a Jiffy Lube. <laughs> Did I ever tell you this story? So... I take my Volvo into a Jiffy Lube, and I've got my girlfriend in the seat, and this is when I was in um, either college or medical school. Uh -huh. No, it must have been, I forget where. No, no, I was a resident. I was a resident. <laughs> See, man, I, I go to Pep Boys, because there's some rough customers at a Jiffy Lube, you know what I'm saying? At the Pep Boys, Manny Mo and Jack, the three best friends your car ever had. Yeah, so, and I want my, my, I want my shill money, Pep Boys. So I go up to this thing, they, uh, they do the oil change, I drive off, smoke's coming out of the front of my vehicle. And I'm like, holy shit, as I drive away, I drive back, I'm like, the things, they forgot to put the cap on, the oil cap back on the engine. So mm -hmm. the oil came squirting out and caught on fire in my yeah, engine. that's bad. I drove back and the guy comes out and he's like, did you take the oil cap off? <laughs> and I was like, sir, look at me. Do I look like someone who even understands how a car works? <laughs> like, I have no idea what you're talking about. All I know is you forgot to put the cap on because it's sitting right here. I didn't, I I didn't took, forget it, bro. That's, so that, that was happening. And then they're like starting to wipe up the oil. <laughs> and I'm like, listen, I don't want to pay for this oil change because you nearly destroyed my car. Yeah. And the guy started getting in my face. 
like, listen, no, you need to pay because this is the thing. And we, yeah, we'll fix this right now. It's uh, no harm, no foul. And I'm like, you don't do your job right. I don't fucking pay. And I started losing my shit. Now, this guy was six foot something brawny mechanic. Now, I didn't realize that this was what was going to happen, but he wasn't taking any shit from me. <laughs> so he gets up in my face. He's like, I will fucking hit you in the face right now. <laughs> and uh, at that point, all the testosterone is going right. I'm yeah. like 25 or something. I was like, you know what? I understand that. <laughs> but I was this close to swinging at him. Mm -hmm. I would have done it. Oh, yeah. And I would have been murdered. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's your 20s, man. Now yeah, I would have been like, listen, this is not worth losing everything. My teeth. I think it's just the, the, <laughs> the cost of tooth replacement. Oh, I can't. Being a young man. You know, this is why, no offense. No offense to all the single mothers out there. It's, oh, the single mothers. You're never going to fully understand what it's like to raise a little boy because you have to be a reformed testosterone addict yourself, yourself yeah. before you can understand what it's like mm. to be on it's like being on a drug all mm. the time mm. you know yeah it's, it's true it's crazy it is it's true We're i can't tell you how many times i had that exact thing Same happen thing. to me yeah oh and but it's i so... actually would swing yeah right <laughs> well you had a little better uh better uh well, i'm six foot something six foot too something. so i'm gonna hit you as See, well in the back of my mind i had a sub mind <laughs> that was telling me bitch you're a pussy <laughs> You're going to get your ass kicked. I don't care how much you go to the gym and how yoked you think you are at 25. Mm -hmm. This guy will kill you just from sheer leverage and weight. Uh, this is why I don't think that we have a toxic masculinity crisis. You know, you love to hear people say that. I think we have a toxic lack of masculinity in our society. I don't think there's enough men sticking around raising their children. Doing it showing them uh, yeah. Like how to handle that. Like yeah. just how to handle, hey, if the oil cap blows off, mm -hmm. it's worth it just to walk away. Okay. You know, you're going to be young. You're going to want to fight. Just walk you away. You know what it is? It's the coward of the county. Yeah. Son. Stop this. Don't We've make the mistakes I've done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, <laughs> this was a good conversation. If you agree, uh, share it. Hit like. Don't be afraid. There are a few F-bombs in it, but no one's going to fire you for sharing it. Maybe they might. Uh, so, Paul, by the way, Paul Duran says, oh, my God, I'm four foot 11. And I was like that. And still, to some degree, I would swing. <laughs> well, you're a bigger man than me then, Paul, at five foot five. Elizabeth says, when you mellow out, most people are actually disappointed. What are reflections of, of things? Wow. You know, I, I felt this. Like, I felt like a lot of people uh, want me to still be the Crazy. me from my 20s because I was really, like, fun. And, like, I was always causing drama yeah. or ruckus, you know. Yeah. And people are like... Go back to being that Tom. That Tom was hilarious. Remember you told that guy to fuck himself right in the movie theater? <laughs> one time these two one time these two girls were talking in I Am Legend, uh, the oh, Will Smith movie. Yes. And uh, they were like, oh, damn, Will Smith looked good with his shirt. I just stood up. I was like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. I just screamed at them. I was like, get out of the theater. Get the fuck out. I'm yelling in the middle of the movie theater. Like, it's a silent scene. Everybody can hear me, you know? And then they go get the managers, and then the managers <laughs> kick them out, but then they want to kick me out, too. I'm like, I'm not fucking leaving. I paid for this goddamn movie ticket. I'm just like horrendous i'm sober too like i'm just i'm beaked up on you know, testosterone you know there is a part of me that does wish that we're back yeah that would be amazing it would make a great live i'd immediately start instagramming live it <laughs> but you know but but the thing is they got that from you the now is the now what you bring to the world now is that's better true. that's the way i like to think of it yeah i've mellowed but i'm it's it's, it's it's better friends of mine who've known me for years like me better now yeah there's the edge is taken off and the, the ego is a little softened people used to say about me they would be like uh, you know how like people be telling you a story and and you know they're like yeah and then i told the guy to fuck off but like really they just like walked yeah. away quietly yeah, he walked away quietly right? they're like if tom told you a story it happened it actually and probably happened. he's downplaying it as was right yeah exactly <laughs> he's downplaying it because he doesn't want to go back to jail <laughs> <laughs> all right well uh z -Pack, i love you guys thank you for supporting the show thank you for everything you do i'm really excited about the movements actually picking up steam uh the podcast we're gonna have a web redesign all kinds of shit's going down thank you for the supporters for helping it happen and i don't know we out or what thumbnail. oh thumbnail thumbnail we'll do a thumbnail should we shill some xylitol no because they still haven't paid me <laughs> looking at you joe xylitol <laughs>